U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs T. Bonaj says the Trump administration is watching closely the remarkable pace of political change in Ethiopia. In the second part of his interview with the uh, interview with Africa, rather his interview with Africa 54's Haiti Adams Fitzpatrick, he discusses China, Nigeria, and the work of Ethiopia's new Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. It has been a total paradigm shift from the point of view of the Ethiopian public, but also the international community. And he was able to take these steps very quickly, including the very bold step of just saying to Eritrea, we'll comply with the, you know, the peace process. We will comply with the Boundary Commission's ruling, which was not, internally, it was not an easy step for Ethiopia to take. And, and just all of a sudden, the, the border's opening up. Uh, between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Uh, Ethiopian Airlines making the, the flight to Asmara, which I wish when I was ambassador there, I, I told people I want to be on that first flight. Well, I couldn't be, but hopefully I can, I can make it at some point soon. So, so again, again, it shows you the difference that one true leader can make, the difference that leadership can make, and the positive re reaction to opening up political space. Uh, there is still a certain amount of, of fragility in this whole process because there is still an entrenched mindset which is very much against these kind of changes. Um, I want to move on to very briefly Nigeria. Nigeria. Um, President Buhari um, visited the White House not too long ago. At this point and under this administration, how would you describe the relationship right now between the United States and Nigeria? Uh, the U United States considers Nigeria one of our key uh, I'd, I'd say even critical partners in Africa. Uh, you know, the largest economy, or sometimes the second largest economy, depending on how it was measured. Uh, the largest population, which will double to 360 million by 2050 and replace the United States as the world's third largest country. Um, tremendous, you know, oil production, uh, young people, dynamic, and, and, and a real genuine security partner for the United States. We, we have to have a partnership. So even if the relationship was not cooperative, we, we would have to have a, some type of a partnership with Nigeria because of the critical uh, role that it plays in Africa. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, we obviously will be watching closely the political process leading to the elections. Uh, Nigerian elections are always exciting to watch. To, to be the leader of Nigeria is, is probably one of the hardest jobs in the world. And so we want to be there, we want to cooperate, we want to be very supportive. And uh, again, the United States does not have a candidate. The candidate is the process, and when the process plays out, we very much hope to remain and, and engage further with Nigeria as a, as a critical partner in Africa. China. Yes. $60 billion in loans and aid yes. to African countries. Yes. They've said that the development that they're engaging in, they want it to be development that Africans can see, that they can touch, that's green and sustainable. Is there a race for investment, for economic, for military, for the hearts and minds, for that kind of primacy? Is there a race for primacy um, I, I, between China and No, I, I wouldn't call it a race for primacy because uh, I, I think America generally agrees that uh, you know, if there's open competition, let the best person win the competition, but let the competition be fair. Do you think the competition is fair? No, not in, not in many places, but, but it needs to be. And, and the other thing that gets me is, you know, people are ta touting uh, China's numbers and somehow they overlook the fact that, that we spend, I, I believe, $3 billion a year on fighting, you know, with PEPFAR, with fighting diseases, uh, incredible amounts of money on, on education programs in Africa, Power Africa, Feed the Future. Um, so overall government uh, investments and private sector investments, if you look at the totality, you know, the United States is, uh, is second to no one. Well, be sure to join Africa 54 tomorrow to hear the U.S. Assistant Secretary for African Affairs discuss the African Youth and the Young African Leaders Initiative with Africa 54's Haiti Adams Fitzpatrick.